lots of rebel um, built-in functions help us deal with blocks, help us manipulate um, blocks of data. In this case, we're going to create a block. It contains, again, some text items. And the built-in word sort, we're going to apply to that block of text. So that block of text is referred to as some colors. We're going to sort that and assign the result to the word sorted colors. When we paste that in, you'll see now that those words um, have been adjusted so they're in alphabetical order. That, that word sort is a built-in funct function that um, Rebel automatically knows. We can print that. Um, the word first is another built-in word. What that does is prints the first item in a block. The first, the first item in a block. In this case, black is the first item in that sorted group. You um, can also find a word. That's another function that searches for an item in a block of data. It's very useful in, in programming. And what it does is returns that um, that item and everything after it. Again, you can. You can do a variety of things. You've seen a write function before. In this case, we're going to write to this file the block of text that's uh, referred to by some colors. Um, one of the really important things about REBEL is it makes it really easy to work with a variety of data types. It understands and automatically knows how to deal with a variety of types. You've already seen how it can deal with image types. In this case, we're going to assign the word an image, an hyphen image, uh, to the image at that address. Let me do this so you can see that it gets downloaded. Um, and now we're going to append that. The word append um, adds an item to a to a block. Now you can see we've got a block that contains the text the text um, items along with a image item. And we don't have to do anything special to allow that to work. Now we can take, for example, the first item in sorted colors in that sorted colors block and it'll show us that is the word black. And uh, we can put into a GUI the fifth item in that block, which is the image that we just downloaded. And it gives us that image. So that block can store any type of data. That's extremely useful and it's a lot easier than it is to, um, to do in other languages. You can store images, sounds, text, other blocks which can contain um, complex data structures, entire databases of information, all in um, a single little block just by enclosing it in brackets. Um, there are some other things that are important to know about, about using blocks. Um, you can refer to items by using the, uh, the label and then uh, using a hyphen and then a number. And that also refers to the fifth item in the block. It's the same thing as what you just saw a moment ago. Fifth sorted colors is the same same thing as sorted colors slash five. Um, you can return the length, the number of items in block. If you look at that sorted colors, you'll see that there are five items, the four text items and the image. Um, and this compose word is really important. We can use that um, a variable up above as if it's been typed in manually using the compose, uh, the compose function. What the compose function is it basically, what it does is it basically um, takes anything that's included in parentheses and returns it to the interpreter as if it's been typed in manually. So this is going to say, the interpreter is going to read this as view layout 
image sorted colors 5, which is exactly what we had um, in, the previous, in the previous line. And it works the exact same way. Since it knows that the length of block is 5, we've already defined that. And the compose word just makes the interpreter think that's been in, typed in by default or, or manually. Here's another way to do it. These all do the exact same thing. Now it's important to understand the syntax. You're going to see these words like compose used constantly. You're going to see uh, different ways of referring to the same thing. Uh, you can insert into a block of data. Now that block of data contains the, uh, the text mauve. You can remove, um, you can go to the beginning of a block of data, you can go to the next item in a block of data, and Rebel keeps track of the item that you're pointing to in any um, block of data. The last item in a block of data. And the fact that you can work with any type of data, access it, manipulate it, move between them, that's the majority of what you do as a programmer. I mean, dealing with data and having ways to easily manipulate that data, um, move it between devices, save it, retrieve it, um, sort it, and so forth. That, that's a big part of what you do as a programmer, and Rebel makes it very easy using that block structure. You can put whatever you want in these blocks and use all the built-in words to manipulate and otherwise deal with that data in a useful way.